Hey everybody and welcome to Don't Copy That Floppy. I'm your host Lex. I'm your other host Dan. <laughs> We're starting early tonight. Not like on time early, but but playing air horns early. <laughs> Earlier than we usually do. Earlier than usual. <laughs> We are a weekly video game news podcast, um, broadcasting on Chipit Radio off of Chipit.net. Where can people find us, Lex? Besides right here. They can find us on all sorts of social media, the whole fist of it. The whole fist of it. They can find us on... Can you handle the whole fist of social media? The whole fist of social media is going to punch you in the face <laughs> with networking. With enjoyable programming yep. for all ages. So we're on Facebook... Obviously. Uh, Who is it? Yeah. Uh, YouTube. Also Steam. Yes. And uh, iTunes. And Twitter. And Twitter. That Don't was forget the Twitter. One. I know I was forgetting. That's that big one. I'm using Twitter so much today, and yet I still forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, you were using Twitter a lot. Because you're going through all that stuff for one of our stories. Yeah. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about. We got a bunch of corporate video game stuff to talk about. Um, oh, forgot from the beginning of our station identification. We broadcast every Friday night. 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's, that's like right now. That's why we're broadcasting. <laughs> See, it's working. <laughs> that's why we this got, is happening. We got our plan all set up. Uh, so yeah, we got some industry news, um, corporate stuff. We've got some little funny stories. We've got some basic news about upcoming game releases and announcements. Things like that. And once we go through everything, we are going to end off with just a little roundup of what's coming out in the next week or so. Uh, uh, Maybe something good will uh, actually be coming out. I'm getting kind of tired. Maybe something good. Maybe something I took good. a peek at it. There's Although, uh, Soma came out this past week. It did. It's been getting great reviews, Yeah, too. I've been hearing great things about it. I've watched uh, some gameplay. It's super spoopy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm considering waiting for a sale to pick it up mm. uh, off of Steam, but we'll see. Um... I want to start with this story since it's very short because it's kind of just. Oh, like, this is a quick fun thing. Yeah. Do we? We um, don't have any uh, Kickstarter news this week. I don't think we do. But I'm just uh, checking. Not sort of not directly Kickstarter news. I do have a little mighty number no. nine thing. Oh no! As usual. What did they do now? <laughs> nothing terrible. It's fine. <laughs> so uh, Friday, October second, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert will be. Having as guests, <laughs> hold on, PewDiePie and the developer of No Man's Sky, Sean Murray. <laughs> Could you have done that a little slower? Could we? I'll, I'll try and I'll try and slow it down on our next. Few okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're gonna be on like. A major late night television show. It's great, which is weird. Well, it's it's uh, I think another example of how games are so much more mainstream now than they used to be, and also hosts uh, are. It's getting to the point where a lot of hosts, even when they're like a little older, like um, Colbert is, yeah, they still played video games when they were younger, and some still yeah. do. And like Conan O'Brien has been doing oh, his, his game stuff has been videos. great. Ah, oh, so good. Um, Jimmy Kimmel called gamers losers, and there was a big argument about that. But then he went and met with Markiplier. And, yes, he did. Um, yeah. Miss May, I think, was the other yeah. one, and they they, they talked it, it out. Yeah. And Jimmy Fallon is all like, "I love video games." Ha ha ha. Of course he does. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so Jimmy Fallon's all right, but he yeah he like devotes a whole week in the summer to talking about video game stuff. Yeah, which is cool. Um, and apparently, uh, Murray will do will be doing a demonstration. Some sort of they're both doing demonstrations actually. Oh, Pootie Pie is demonstrating being scared, being Swedish, <laughs> <laughs> saying bro and screaming <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Maybe he'll play Soma. What a hero of our time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, both are doing demonstrations, so obviously Murray's will be something from No Man's Sky. I mean, it's gotta be, right? It's gotta be. It's my new game, Mighty Number no. 10. <laughs> I assure you, this won't affect the development of No Man's Sky in any way. No Man's Sky delayed till 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to it. I want to talk about this next story because it made me really happy. Oh no. <laughs> this is a story from Destructoid. On September 23rd, entitled 
Ron Jeremy thinks video games are boring and ruining our youth. So porn star, famous porn star. Really ugly porn star. Really too. gross yeah, famous. He's so porn star. gross. <laughs> Ron Jeremy has decided that he thinks also porn star who starred in the hush hush kept under the rug by Nintendo porn parody Super, Super Hornio Hornio Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Uh says, and I quote, when he remembers filming Super Horneo Brothers, I had never seen the video game. I don't play them at all, except when I go to Hugh Hefner's mansion. Other than that, I never play video games ever. I think they're boring. The only time when they're not boring is when you're at a millionaire's mansion surrounded by beautiful women. Yes. That's interesting. Beautiful naked women. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's uh, when video games are a real thrill. Yeah, that's the only time they're a thrill, though. Any other time <laughs> in his life. Forget it. Forget it. But it goes on, because Ron Jeremy has to remind us that he was a teacher before he was a porn star. Oh my god, please, no. I mean, at least he looks like a teacher. And, and the, as a former school teacher, he says, Asians are kicking our ass. Our kids are drinking beer and playing video games. But Asians are getting high SAT scores. When was he? A, was he a teacher in like the eighties or something? Because that was that was a long time ago. I mean, people still say that nothing is wrong with video games recreationally, though. He says, well, but our kids not. are living in it. You know, they're not even reading books anymore. I mean, books do suck. Well, I just want to say that I think that everything that Ron Jeremy has brought to this discussion is a hundred percent valid mm -hmm. and true. I don't disagree with any. <laughs> Those Asians are getting the highest SAT scores. Like, you won't believe. All right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, story's over, I guess. I we... guess that's it. <laughs> Ron Jeremy said these things. We agree. <laughs> we agree 100%. Um, oh, God. I can imagine Ron Jeremy is, like, a gross gym teacher. Can't you? You can see him as a gym teacher, right? I mean, yeah, look at this picture of him in, like, a Mario costume. Even though he's wearing a beret. Mario doesn't wear a beret. Yeah, that's weird. What is the kind of hat Mario wears? Is that, like, a newsy cap? Seems like, yeah. Also, disclaimer, we don't agree with Ron Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, no, Ron Jeremy sucks. <laughs> and all of the things he said in this article are baffling. And kind of racist. <laughs> and kind of pretty racist, actually. <laughs> um... Oh, boy. Do we have a soundboard for Ron Jeremy? We sure do. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of Asians... <laughs> Segway! Segway! Um, Chinese censorship is apparently uh, hindering the sales of PS4s over there. Oh. Now the consoles have become available. Look at this Chinese censorship. This was on TV. You can't see those exploded heads. You can't see them. Big black dots. It's an article from Destructoid on the 20th that uh, says, goes into detail that uh, Sony released PS4 in China this March. Um, Looking to take advantage of the lifted trade embargoes that we've talked about a lot. Um, and apparently this has been pretty unsuccessful. Um, Call of Duty, Killzone, and Bloodborne are all banned from sale on the mainland. And the Chinese market just doesn't seem to care about foreign-made games, let alone ones for expensive consoles. I'm surprised they just don't care about them. Yeah, because it says even on smartphones and computers, Western and Japanese developed titles seem to have a hard time succeeding. For whatever reason. Communism? Com communism? Is that the reason? It must be. It must be. <laughs> I can't think of any other good reason. This is kind of a shame, though, because we've talked a lot about how we think it's a good thing that um, the Chinese market is becoming bigger for this kind of stuff. But if they're not buying any outside games, like they'll maybe, buy the consoles, but that's not Does enough. that mean it's just going to implode in on itself, potentially? I, yeah, I assume that the longer this embargo is down, the more Chinese people are going to come around to, to outside titles. Yes. Because... They're great. They're such great titles, yeah. and these people, I, I, I gotta assume it has to something to do with like xenophobia that they just don't want to like and, look at other culture stuff. Yeah, isolation for so long. Yeah, I mean, 
because Japanese gamers ad- adapt, adopt um, bigger Western games, too. When I was in Japan, I saw big ads for Grand Theft Auto Five all over the place. Everybody loves Grand Theft Auto. So, like, they're you not... You can kill like, prostitutes. Who doesn't love that? Everybody. It's great. <laughs> you can kill regular people, too. Yeah. That's not so much fun. <laughs> you can do that in any game, Dan. <laughs> Those people in Call of Duty are prostitutes. What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> The prostitutes have their hands on a nuclear weapon. <laughs> Get in there. We're going in hot. <laughs> um, in other news, in an article on Polygon, September 24th, the Gear VR is shipping in November. This is Samsung. Um, the VR hardware from Samsung and o- Oculus aimed at developers and enthusiasts. Um, is the, That's the first version. But a retail version was just announced. That will launch in November for ninety nine dollars. Just aimed at a more mainstream, casual audience. I forgot about this. There's so many VR ads. I know. I forgot about it too. Great. Is there? There's not much more to the story. It's coming. <laughs> so I mean, if you're at all interested in VR, it's coming out in November. You can check it out. Check it out. It's cheaper than the other one. <laughs> it is cheaper. That's true. You know what game genre is lacking? Male shower simulators. Yeah, I was. I saw the title of this article and I thought, I can't. Yeah, I guess male shower simulators. There, there haven't been enough, right? Clearly, totally underserved demographic. So last week, this indie game released, which is a first-person male showering game called Rinse and Repeat. <laughs> so the, the article this... cheekily states from Polygon on the twenty first. This is the latest game in the burgeoning wet naked man genre. <laughs> oh, yeah. Preceded by Shower with Your Dad Simulator 2015. <laughs> um, <laughs> interestingly, though, this game is actually this was developed by um, a man named Robert Yang, and the official description of the game by him states that it is an exploration of male homosexuality. The developer, who is queer himself, um, wrote a big blog post about that where he talks about the issues of consent and power dynamics um, at the game center. And appropriately, he talks a lot about showering, too. Oh, yeah. But, so that this game, initially, I was like, what is this goofy indie game someone made? And then I realized it's not really supposed to be goofy. More, more of an art project. More of an art thing, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's like, you know, it's about body awareness and some, some stuff like that. What I also I found another article that I I guess I closed by mistake. This game got promptly banned from Twitch. <laughs> it's on Twitch's list of banned games now. I guess because of all the naked dudes. I mean that would do it. That would do it. <laughs> kind of too bad though, because um, it seems like actually a pretty interesting idea. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's certainly weird. But why not? If it makes you think, it makes me think. <laughs> I look at the screen, you know, bro, that feels so good. <laughs> okay, the weirdest thing about this screenshot is that the hand... So the screenshot from this Polygon article, which is yes. from September 21st, please read it. Please um, <laughs> um, it. The screenshot is like this guy's back, and then there's a hand that's like rubbing his back, you know, rubbing that soap in there. And then the quote, as Dan said, is, bro, that feels so good. But the <laughs> weird thing about it is that the hand looks so much smaller yeah. Then the guy, it seems like it's a child watching it. <laughs> and that makes it so much weirder. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. He's an indie developer. He made it by himself. <laughs> Cut him some slack. I tried. It's not like a $250 million AAA title yet. <laughs> Yay Games. EA Games buys the rights to rinse and repeat. <laughs> They're going to sell you his shampoo as DLC. All right. Why don't you on. take us into this GameStop story? Oh man! So you know how GameStop sucks? Sure do. <laughs> okay, so this is—we uh, have another example of them sucking. This is a slightly older story. I meant to get to it last week, but I yeah. forgot about it. It's from September sixteenth. We had a lot to talk about last week. We did. Uh, so this is about how uh, the kind of bundles that GameStop is going to be selling. 
in right. the future. Now, typically what a lot of game retailers do, uh, now that digital copies are a thing, is they'll sell you bundles with a console and a digital copy of a game. So the idea is, besides the console, the only thing you're getting is like a little slip that says, like, oh, this is the code that you enter, and then you get a download of the game. Uh, and this has become very popular because, as I was saying, digital yeah. downloads kind of a big deal now, continue to rise as a bigger and bigger deal. Uh, GameStop, however, is saying, no, 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 we will not sell those bundles because we do not want to sell digital copies of anything. Uh, so you can't buy those bundles there, which kind of sucks, but really just drives away business from GameStop, which I'm all about. Yeah. <laughs> But also... I like getting physical copies of games, though, so I always liked when the bundle, like, actually came with a copy of the game. Yeah. Like, I bought my Wii U at GameStop, and it came with, like, a digital copy of Wind Waker HD. And I was like, oh, it's kind of hoping it would be a disc. But it wasn't. <laughs> um, now, the, the reason... Uh, GameStop's reasoning for doing this totally makes sense. Uh, because their whole profit model is that they sell a game, mm -hmm. and then they buy the game. They sell the game for sixty dollars. They buy it back for twelve dollars, and then they sell it for fifty dollars. Yeah. So they and they profit off all of that. Yeah. Um. So they want to sell people more physical games, so they get more back. Yes, and that makes sense for them, but it doesn't make sense in terms of like the growing trend of everything moving to digital. There was some sort of statistic that like twenty percent of games sold. Uh oh, twenty percent of console, console games, games sold. are sold digitally. Yeah, wow, which is a pretty big number, and wow. probably only going to grow as time goes on. Yeah. Although, if games keep getting bigger downloads, maybe it won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, this is only going to hurt GameStop in the long run. For everybody who bought the uh, digital copy of Metal Gear Solid Five, I hope you enjoyed starting the game today. <laughs> What was the deal with that? Remember? It was like a 28 or 30-something gigabyte game. Oh, you had to yeah, download the yeah, whole thing yeah. through Steam. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. If you're in Australia, it'll still be another week until you can play it. But, it's, uh, it's great, though. You'll really enjoy it once you start. Yeah. You'll get, you'll get into it. <laughs> you'll get there eventually. Just keep believing. Uh, so EA Games. Maybe sending out some hints that they want to try and do... Another one of their uh, PC subscription services, like Origin. Because Origin works so well. Everyone loves Everybody it. Everybody loved it, and it did great. Uh, yeah. And they just decided to gracefully remove it from the market for no real good reason at all. Exactly. <laughs> so keep on trucking, EA. Yeah, yeah so um, they, they sent out, like, a survey. Yeah, they sent out a big old survey, a bunch of pages long, and it was uh, saying things like, If, if you were going to subscribe to an online game service... <laughs> the provided games um, published by EA, Bethesda, Ubisoft, Activision, and Take Two. How much would you pay? Yeah, it's it's literally that. Would you want a discount rate? Oh, whoa! Would you like to include trials of upcoming games? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> include expansion packs? No. I like that these those are even options. Dude, expansion Funny. packs aren't even a thing anymore. It's all DLC yeah. now, so to call anything expansion packs is kind of misleading. I like that you can answer no to all of these, because, like, who would? Who would say, yeah, I want a new online subservice, but I don't want any features? None. None. I want to be as bare bones as possible. Whoever Which games would you like to see? None of these. <laughs> I just want to subscribe to nothing for a month. Uh, and pay, but there is not a no option for the subscription price. There is <laughs> there is not a free price. option for that. No. <laughs> what subscription price would you pay? Nothing. No, 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 no. Uh, um, so we'll see if this goes anywhere. It won't. It probably won't. No, nope. because they're probably going to get back data that they don't like. Yep. And decide, oh yeah, maybe we shouldn't try doing this again. Now, apparently they have something on consoles called EA Access. Yes. That they might be trying to model this after, because that's been more successful for them than Origin. I mean, anything is more successful than Origin. Uh, but it's just funny to me that they're like, we will not be part of Steam. We won't. We won't do it. And I'm like, you guys, seriously, Steam, Steam won a long time ago. Just, just give up. Unless you have some sort of model that's competitive to Steam, which you don't. 
judging Absolutely by not. judging by this little well, questionnaire. And it'll be almost impossible to start up a new thing with a model that's competitive to Steam. And I get that there are these five companies and each one of them publish lots of AAA titles. Yeah. But when you compare that to the, you know, tons and tons of stuff that Steam or even good old games offers, it's nothing. It's like at this point it's like World of Warcraft. At this point everyone's in too deep for you to jump into the market. Yeah. Cuz World of Warcraft has so much more than any other MMO that could launch now. And that to, people will play the new MMO for a month, see everything there is to see, and just go back to WoW. And to be fair, um, uh, what was I going to say? The, it's not like they didn't try and jump in earlier when the iron was hotter, because that's what Origin was. But Steam's just a better deal. But they, yeah, but they messed it up. So don't try again. You don't get, you don't get a second chance. <laughs> no second chances, <laughs> yay. No. <laughs> Not for you, EA. Not for you. Not for you. The uh, the the only way I can see this working for them is if there comes a point in time where uh, Steam's base starts to dwindle. Yeah. Uh, in the same way that, to your WoW analogy, WoW's base is starting to dwindle. Yeah. So I feel like in a couple more years, if that trend continues, we could see another game that is actually like WoW attempt to take its place and may successfully do that. Because so many people have left WoW. So for and by that same token, I think if that kind of trend started with Steam, which is not happening right now at all, but if it started, I could see EA trying to muscle in while Definitely. their opponent was weak. But now is not a good time. No. They're not going to be able to do Steam's it. Steam's doing great right now, so it's like... It's not happening. Uh, I want everybody to stop upsetting Phil Spencer. He's such a nice guy. He's getting upset. They're hurting his tender heart. My cat is, like, all over you right now. She's, she's into it. Take us into this article, Lex. Okay, so this you is found, an article from, from, from GameSpot. Yep. Because, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> GameSpot. <laughs> uh, from uh, September 23rd, entitled uh, Xbox Boss Finds Console Wars Debate, Quotes, Distasteful. Um, so this is an interview they did with Phil Spencer, the guy who runs Xbox. As mm-hmm. you would assume, uh, and they were just asking him about the console wars and the and the discussions that happen around them, and he was saying, "Yeah, like I I understand that we have competition, but I'm glad we have competition. I think it's healthy, and I support our competition. I don't want to get into discussions or arguments about which console is better. And well, let's see what are some of his quotes." Um, uh, I've, I've said before, the one thing that I probably find a little distasteful in the discourse around games is the divisiveness that people try and build between platforms. And what's the other one? Um, uh, it becomes more about what piece of plastic you own than what games I'm playing. Or what piece of plastic I own than what games I'm playing. It becomes more about somebody else failing than the things I love succeeding. Uh, I don't think that's a good place for our industry. Now, that second point, I think, is extremely valid. Because for some reason, and maybe I just don't, maybe I just tune them out now, but the whole console wars thing, I notice way less now than I noticed it, like, or, like, in past generations. Oh, no, it's still huge. I guess so. I just PS4, Xbox One thing is, like, ridiculous. And we and everybody talk just about it on the show. over the Wii U. It's an easy target. It is an it's easy, really target. easy target. <laughs> I mean, it's got like five good games. <laughs> but those games are great. They're really good. There's just those only five, five games are like amazing. Uh, but no, so his second point here that uh, <laughs> that uh, it becomes more about somebody else failing than the things I love succeeding. Yeah, I think that is strikes me as extremely true. Yeah. And very thoughtful, because that's what I see all over the internet. Yeah, you'll see new ga- a new game release, and nobody talks about, like, like how... Happy they are. How that, happy they are. They I mean, talk people about, do. People do, but then there's all these people who are just like, ooh, the game sucks, it's garbage, it's garbage on release, I hate it, I'm glad it's doing bad. And, and, uh, and, and, your yeah, review scores aren't perfect, your game sucks. Yeah, and it just seems like the, the sort of the negative... Mm-hmm. way outweighs the positive. Everybody overblows the negative aspects of the game like to an absurd degree. Now, now with us, we certainly like to poke fun at games. We do. Watch Dogs. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, watch Dogs. 
Um, but at the same time, we also... Yeah, I'm not taking back anything I've said about No, that's fine. I'm not, I wouldn't ask you to. But at the same time, I, I mean, one of the things we like to poke fun at more than games are companies, yeah. like EA, like um, uh, GameStop, stuff like that. Yep. Um, but... But we also like to spend a lot of time talking about things we're excited about because that's more important. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and I see on the internet a lot, especially in social media, it's just people being like, well, this sucks. Yeah. So I'm just going to talk about how much it sucks. And I'm like, yeah, or you could, you know, talk about something positive and then yeah. that would just be better. Well, I've seen, I've I, in, like, I've been playing Metal Gear for a while now. Since it came out, and I, I've seen a ton of people saying like, "Oh, it's really good, it's really great," and they got great review scores. But then I just see these huge groups of people just kind of clustered around each other, being like, "The game's terrible. This is why. This is terrible. This is terrible. This is terrible. Every single part of this game is terrible. What a disappointment. What a mess. What an unfinished, broken game." And I'm playing it, and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And I'll come across a thing that they say is like a huge problem. And I'll encounter it in the game, either a part of the story, or or some gameplay segment or something, and I'll get through it and be like, that was it? That was what I saw somebody write a two-paragraph rant about how it ruined the game? This scene of, like, a character beating a guy up that's, like, completely in context and fine and, like... What are you doing, people? Listen, love blooming on the battlefield.avi more than makes up for any bad things oh that could God, possibly does. happen in I, the new Metal Gear game. Also, I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone who's still playing the game. I haven't finished it yet. But I got to a point, I think for anyone who wants to know the mission number, I got a mission number 23. And there was a. I'm not even. I'm going to put it in little air quotes, so since you can't see me doing this, there's little air quotes. A boss fight. In this mission, there was a hoot. <laughs> and, oh man, watch out for that white mamba, everybody. <gasps> uh, but it, it's, and I don't see anybody talking about these moments. This, I feel like this is a good game to use an example because it's a big AAA release that just came out. Yeah. And I've seen so much of this negativity towards it. I've seen so few people talking about specific moments and things in it that they love. Whereas every time I think about the game, I think about these things I've done in it that was like, oh, that was so cool. I loved that part. It was great. <laughs> that last mission I did was so fun. It's My mind is never like, mm, this kind of goat doesn't live in Africa. I can't believe Kojima put this here. Game ruined. <laughs> I just extract the goat and have fun. No authenticity. You shoot those goats up in the air. Take them back to the zoo. Because I have a zoo. Oh, good. You get a zoo platform. <laughs> it's got bears and birds and goats. <laughs> you can go pet them. <laughs> Metal Gear. So, so, in the, so this is uh, this story goes on to talk a little bit about uh, Spencer's track record, where he um, congratulated Sony on the success yeah. of its PS4 exclusive Bloodborne, yeah. which totally deserves to be congratulated. Yeah. Uh, and he supports Nintendo's new CEO. He came out with a with a statement about that. What a friendly guy, dude. We, I mean, what Phil if, Spencer? He's kind of businessmanny, but like he keeps doing stuff that doesn't make me mad. I know, right? Like, like I, I feel think... like I should dislike him for some reason, but I can't because every time a news article like this comes out, I'm like, Phil Spencer, you're all right. Yeah, we. I think every story we've done about Phil Spencer since he took the it's position been, it's been has been positive. Like, all of them have been just positive. him making smart decisions or doing nice things. Yeah. Just not being an ass. Yeah, and th that's like the whole crust of this article. He's like, what if we were just more positive and less negative? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that would be nice. Let's let's, let's do that, let's, everybody. Let's do that, Phil. <laughs> uh, of I'm course, with you, Phil. Of course, then when you read the comments, it's all people being negative. Of uh, course it is. So because just don't. Just don't. It's not worth it. Yeah. Do what we do. Don't pay attention to social media unless it's directed specifically at you because we're on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else I want to talk about wars. with that? The console wars rage on. Let's let's make them. Let's tr everybody try hard to stop complaining about the consoles you don't own or the consoles you do own. Like it's dumb. It's just like Phil Simmons said. It's a piece of plastic. They all the internal 
parts on an Xbox One and a PS4 are fairly different. That's true. The, the specs on these consoles are really not that different. It's just if it says an X on it or not. Like, who cares? Just, if you want to play a certain video game, get a console that lets you play that video game. There you go. Yeah. And all these people get so bad out of shape about console exclusivity with things like Bloodborne. And there's all these people who are like, Blood Bloodborne on PC, Blood Bloodborne on PC. And don't seem to understand, like, there's a reason why the games were developed that way. Or, like, when Bayonetta 2 was coming out as a Wii U exclusive, and everyone was like, oh my god, Platinum, why aren't you putting this on Xbox and PlayStation? Because that's not how it works. Nintendo gave them the money to make that game. Sony and Microsoft didn't want to. They don't want the game. It means it's not going to be on their consoles. And it's still... It's not Platinum's decision. Like, people get mad at these developers for this. Like, ooh, from software, you only put out Bloodborne on the PS4? What the hell? Yeah, because Sony paid them oodles of money to make it for PS4. Yeah. And Sony, surprisingly, shockingly, didn't put a footnote in the contract that said, also make a copy for Xbox One. Make a version for Xbox One, because those guys are all right. Because Phil Spencer's all right. He's yeah. a good guy. Like, no, I'm sorry, but that didn't happen. That, that's not how business works. No. So, shut up. <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying to all the people who complain about console exclusivity and use that as leverage in this console war argument. Because even the other side can be said. P- people who own a PS4 and have Bloodborne, stop rubbing it in people's faces. Don't be a jerk about it. Yeah, that's not cool. Just going on and be like, oh, but you wish you had PS4 so you could play Bloodborne. Yeah, they probably do. But don't be an asshole. <laughs> The more you know. The more you do, 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 do. <laughs> read a book, for Christ's sake. No, Ron, if You know who wants us to read a book? Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. <laughs> we do agree with him. We do agree with Ron Jeremy. Oh, my disc drive. The gross <laughs> Zoo Tycoon. <laughs> That's what you're playing right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> Metal Gear put the fever in me. <laughs> uh... No, my girlfriend's paying, playing that. That was your tag. It was fun. Yeah, Dude, she original... did one of her Dodo Birds big buzz. Of so. course. <laughs> original Roller Coaster Tycoon, I have some fond memories. Oh, yeah. Every, yeah. I think everybody does. I think so. And who could forget the infamous Mr. Bones Wild Ride? <laughs> which I've been told never ends. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. Oh, I love it. All right, so let's move on to a story from uh, Game Rant. Yeah, speaking of consoles. Uh, from four days ago. What's the date today? Is it the 25th? It's the 25th. So this is from the 21st of September. Yes. Uh, uh, do you guys remember Michael Patcher? I feel like I do. I, I had, he, he's this analyst guy. Didn't he do some other poor analysis of something? Last year, yes. Related to video games? Yep. He made the same prediction last console cycle. Oh, he, this was the exact same p- prediction? Yes. Oh, okay. And it was t- totally wrong, so, you know, double down. Yeah. Uh, so All this, or nothing, right, Monkey? <laughs> so, yeah, he's an analyst, and he's kind of an idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, he's an analyst who's very good at his job. He's won many awards uh, <laughs> for his quality analysis. So he has uh, he has predicted that this generation of uh, game consoles will be the last, yeah, the last real console cycle. To which I say, no, uh, that's not true. Uh, his explanation for this is that uh, the Wii U is going to sell twenty million units compared to the one hundred million of the Wii. The PS4 is going to sell one hundred to twenty, one hundred twenty million to one hundred thirty million. Dash, that's great. <laughs> the Xbox <laughs> One will sell one hundred million to one hundred ten million. Dash, that's great. Add it all together, and it's two hundred sixty million units, maybe. And the last cycle was two hundred seventy. Oh my God. 10 million off within the margin of error. Well, <laughs> obviously, game console sales are going rapidly downhill, and this is the last game console. Should we just make this like the last episode of the podcast now? We might as well. We don't have anything to talk about pretty soon. Because no tra- Nostradamus over here is protected. <laughs> The kid consoles are over. And he obviously knows what he's talking about. No, that that reasoning <laughs> is such ridiculous BS. It's it's really really conjectural. Yeah, 
Now you could now you analysis. could say now you could say okay the Wii U is selling twenty compared to the Wii U's hundred. Now there's a huge change, but as we know from last cycle, the Wii U was like a breakaway hit, or the Wii was a breakaway hit, and the Wii U has not lived up to that standard. No. Um. So if last cycle was a little more, that would make sense because of all of the people who never bought consoles before buying a Wii. Actually, if you were to say that like let's say the Wii was not a breakaway success, yeah. it sold as many as uh, they it sold well, but it didn't hit other markets. So let's say it sold like fifty million. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would mean that this console cycle is actually significantly making selling more units than last mm-hmm. console cycle because the other the the PS4 and the Xbox One are selling really well. Selling really well. Yeah. So and to so wouldn't that denote make growth? This- <laughs> so, so to make, basically, we're also saying that the last generation sold so well because the Wii sold so many units. Yeah. Because the Wii was ridiculous. With its unit sales, um, you're, you're going to continue to have breakaway hits like the Wii every so often. Mm-hmm. So to say that that's done, there will never be something like that again, is ridiculous. And also Next can... console generation, there could be some super console that, for whatever reason, like the Wii... Everybody wants and might sell just as many as the Wii or more than the Wii, and that might be how virtual reality stuff pans out. Maybe we don't know, I but mean, it might. He goes on to say that he doesn't mean that these businesses are going to go out of business. He more means that the next console cycle will be more what the 3DS is to the DS, which he means as like. I think w- I think what he means by that is it's not going to be a full new console, but more a modified version of the last console. Well, no, what he points out here is that the DS um, moved almost twice as many units per year over five years than the 3DS did. So but again, because the 3DS is just an option. Yeah. So, but what again? What he's doing, and he did this earlier with the the Wii and the Wii U comparison, is he's taking a very specific example and saying it's indicative of the whole industry. Yeah, and that's not well, and also, really reasonable. Yeah. Uh, also, it's not like the three DS doesn't sell well. It sells really well. It does. Um, the DS just happened to sell better, but that doesn't mean they won't have another upswing with the next handheld that they put out. Um, it's just, it's he's, just, he's, he's grabbing at straws. By his own numbers, it, you should be able to extrapolate that the game industry has at least stayed exactly the same. And if you, yeah. and as I was saying earlier, I don't know if you, why he, it's like, does he want to be the guy who like predicted the console crash or something? Yeah. He's looking into, he's looking into the future and being like, one day these console things will probably crash. Better keep talking about it. And then when it happens, I'll be like, I told you so. Eventually I'll be right. He's like that guy with the, the end is nigh sign walking around New York City. Yeah. It's like, one of these days is going to be doomsday and then everybody will stop laughing at me. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's talk about voice acting. Oh, the main event. Yeah. Actually, do you want to talk about anything before that and then end the show with voice yeah, acting? Yeah, why don't we end with that? Well, because I have a few other little stories. So we got like 20 minutes, so... Um, Mighty Number no. 9, uh, which was delayed to 2016, and then a demo was promised, and then the demo was delayed, and everybody's mad at KG Inafune, and I think rightfully so. Oh, yeah. Because it's ridiculous. Has gotten its official release date. Again. Again. February 9th, 2016. So, that's like, a little ways off. Five months off of its original planned release Which day. is not horrible. No. But it's not great either. What I'm afraid is going to happen is we're going to get closer to that date and it's going to change again. Because right. they already had a date. Right. So now I'm not sure if I can trust them. Well, and especially after the demo. Especially uh, after the demo. I got to like, too. Yeah. I think everybody's there. So I suppose we'll wait and see. You know who's going to be reporting on it when we find, when that news happens? Uh, GameSpot. Game yes, Spot probably Kotaku. Maybe uh, a day later. <laughs> <laughs> but their 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 angle on the story was that the, is that it'll be racist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How come the robots white? How come all the robots are white? Oh, look at this! Look at all these white robots. Oh my god! So look at this white bread robot in the back here. <laughs> 
So yeah, we're gonna see. <laughs> we're gonna see. We're yep. Gonna... Uh, so apparently on September nineteenth, or no, on September eighteenth. September 17th, <laughs> excuse me, the all-time Donkey Kong world record was beaten twice in that day. What? By the same guy or by two different, D- different people? Because that would be weird. That's so people. weird. Yeah. So, um, it, it was, it, it, I think it actually happened because there was this Donkey Kong online open event. Okay. 2015, which was a tournament organized, by, okay, I'm going to preface this story. I want everyone to know, because I read this before we did the show. We're going to go deep into the rabbit hole here. You may hear some things that frighten you (laughs) or confuse you. Just go with it. DonkeyKongForum.com. Give you a moment to catch your breath. That website exists. Organized a Donkey Kong Online Open 2015 tournament. I'm going to let you take take a knee for a moment so you can process this information. Oh. Okay. All right. In which one Wes Copeland registered a score of 1,170,500 points on a, on a Donkey Kong arcade game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, if verified, would have taken the ti- if verified, would have taken away the title from Robbie Lakeman, pictured above, as a Polygon article, by the way, um, who wrested it from Hank Chin one year ago. Or Shen? I don't know. Mm. Turns out that verifying it was pointless because Lakeman, pictured above, came in six hours later with the score of 1,172,100 that is, was just a score that's also awaiting verification, but if it holds up, would be the highest certified score on an arcade cabinet of Donkey Kong ever. The only higher scores on emulation. So, Twin Galaxies, a company generally acknowledged as the world record authority in video gaming, says that neither competitor has submitted their score yet, but they did note both feats yesterday. But apparently Copeland immediately submitted his score, and they're waiting on Lakeman to make it all official. And this story is hilariously in-depth for something that I didn't know about until half an hour ago. <laughs> is basically where I'm going with all of this. This So I... I it's, it just sounds fishy to me. The fact that they haven't verified either of the scores yeah. yet. And that the only... That, that it's happened twice in the same day from... And the guy, the second guy, was the dude who was defending the title. Mm. Who just said, like, Ooh... I beat him, though. He didn't get it. And now he hasn't submitted his score. Um, Oh, and the guy who scored, did the first new score, Wes Copeland, was the first gamer to score 1.1 million points in Donkey Kong with his first life. Oh. He didn't die until they got 1 million, 100,000 points. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's like super ridiculous. Seems unbelievable. Amazing. Hmm. Oh my god. Um, apparently these two... So these guys have a rivalry, apparently, that has captivated Donkey Kong enthusiasts. <laughs> this is so silly sounding. All ten Donkey Kong enthusiasts. <laughs> DonkeyKongForum.com Um... And the two will meet again at the Twin Galaxies Entertainment Festival from October 2nd to 4th in Banning, California. Twin Galaxies promises a series of exclusive battles between the two to settle who is the best. I had no idea there was this fierce rivalry over Donkey Kong Arcade Cabinet games. Did you? No. I really don't care. (laughs) Neither do I. This is one of the most in-depth articles about something video game read that I've ever read that I read the whole thing and I'm like, why do people care so much? I mean, I guess it's like a world record thing, so that's interesting. But I don't care about other world records that much either. It's true. Like, this guy's hair is 79 feet long. Oh, look out! This guy's hair is 79 feet and one inch long! What now? What a fierce hair-growing rivalry! We're promising you... 
a non-stop, no-holds-barred 12-hour marathon of them sitting next to each other making their hair grow longer. Who will win? Or, I mean, I don't even care about things that require, like, real effort. Like, oh, this guy holds the world record for swimming the English Channel consecutively, like, X number of times. Okay. And I'm like, dude, I still don't care. Like, I understand yeah. that's a great feat. But, like, but so I don't, what? I really don't care. <laughs> And, like, Donkey Kong's a cool game. I don't care who holds the This is the it. world's most expensive pair of pants. So? Okay. <laughs> There's only one like it in the whole world. Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. So, so we're going to have to do an update on that story because it's so important. Yep. And we're both thrilled about it. System Shock is getting re-released 21 years later. The first System Shock. So for those who don't know what System Shock is, um, it came out in the 90s. Yep, 1994. And it's a first-person shooter RPG. Yeah, and it's uh, seen as... It's pretty revolutionary. It was. It's like crazy cyberpunk craziness. Yeah. It's seen as sort of the uh, the inspiration for things like Bioshock. Yeah. Uh, and Well, it was made by the same people. Oh, it was made by the same people. I forgot about yeah. that. I apologize. Uh, so it's very directly, it's very directly inspired, <laughs> inspired by Jack. Um, it also, for when it came out, looks really good. It does. Like man, you look at it, like this game doesn't even look bad. No, it looks at great. All. Uh, so but, yeah, that's cool. Though. But yeah, so they're coming out with System Shock Enhanced Edition, it's and it's been... gonna it's gonna have uh, native. It's got widescreen native resolutions. Yeah. Uh, which... um, September twenty second uh, this year. When this article was published, was actually the game's twenty first anniversary of release. Oh, too. So nice, yeah. And it's going to be on um, good old games. Yep. So check that out if you are interested. If you've already played System Shock, I'm sure you already want to play it again once it's re released. Well, it's super cool. Maybe the last time you played it was when it came out in 1994, and you don't remember most of it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now you can play it on widescreen. It'll be great. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, so this is also quick news, beta. but it is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, so we have a release date for the Star Wars Battlefront beta, and that uh, beta, and that date is October eighth. I'm excited. I'm going to download it. Um, it's going to be available between October eighth and October twelfth. That's it. That's it. Just a little five day window. Um, you will be able to do the Walker Assault on Hoth, which is a forty player battle where you fight. ATATs. Dude, they they seen the movie. They know. You know. <laughs> you know. There's a mission on an eight point eight verse eight point that boop eight v eight. I'm talking <laughs> eight v eight uh, versus matches, uh, where the escape pods crashing down and you have to control them. And then there's a survival mission on Tatooine, which is a co-op split screen or online mode where you hold off waves of Imperial troops. To try and survive. Including ATSDs. Yes. High fighters. Elite, elite stormtroopers. Storm troopers. Not the right nine your mama's stormtroopers. Those elite stormtroopers, they might actually be able to hit something. You know they can. Oh dang. It's gonna be scary, man. And finally, the most important piece of news before our actual important news, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 3 <gasps> will launch in spring 2016 and will support PlayStation VR. Of course it will. Of course it will. <sighs> Oatmeal Fate has outdid himself this time. <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at him in VR? Will there be a VR Itagaki for us to interact with? I'm and sorry, send, Itagaki. That was me. And send presents. No, he's a jerk. Oh, okay. He's like one of the few people in the gaming industry that I have no problem just viciously making fun of. I mean, he does make games that are just... He's a super misogynistic asshole. He's pr the pretty sexist. Like, the it's not pretty even... pretty straight up just it's sexist It's not games. just the sexist stuff, even. Like, he's just a jerk. Okay. So, if you see interviews with him, like, he's super pompous. And even though he doesn't really make many very good games anymore. I mean, Ninja Gaiden, now he just coasts off that, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, because, man... Uh, Devil's Third... That's so good. That's so good. That's so, good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, extreme volleyball. You can play it virtual reality because, yeah. of course, you can. Yeah. So let's get into this article about voice actors. We got a good ten minutes to do All right. this. All um, right. So I'm going to be citing a Forbes article from September 24th for most of this, um, but this has been reported on all sorts of places. Uh, video game voice actors. You know them, you love them. They're the voices of some of your most famous avatars. Yeah. Uh. They are try are threatening to go on strike 
um, unless the deals of their union contracts can be renegotiated. Um, now, this is something their union has been trying to negotiate with AAA developers since I believe it was like February or something. They've been yeah. they've been at this a while, and they've made pretty much no headway. And it hasn't been in the news much until now either, because for some reason people don't report on voice actors very much. Yeah. Uh, so now the voice actors are saying like, okay, well, negotiations are broken down, so we feel like we don't have much choice other than to threaten a strike. Yeah. Uh, and really, like, they're the things that they want are super reasonable, and yeah. I really hope that they get all of them. Um, the first thing being performance bonuses, which and, essentially would just be royalties Yeah, for if a game they did, they performed and does really well. Which for AAA voice actors, like Jennifer Hale in Mass Effect, um, Nolan North in the Uncharted games, um, any number of other people at this point. Steve Bloom in every game ever made. Um... <laughs> Johnny Young Bosch in every JRPG ever made. <laughs> Yuri Lowenthal in whatever they can fit him into. Uh, all those people who voice tons of characters, done great jobs, apparently all this time have not been getting any royalties, no matter how well these games do. Yeah, I kind of assumed that was already part of their contract, I but no, too. they never got paid for that. So That's the, ridiculous. The way it's going to work now is uh, they would uh, they would get a performance bonus for every 2 million copies of the game sold or every 2 million subscribers to an online game, it's nice that they put that that caveat for online games And that's not there. even that big a deal, because any game that breaks 2 million copies is a big success. And will have made plenty of money totally. to pay these voice actors a little extra. Like, most games don't break 2 million copies. <laughs> they just don't. Uh, so the next thing they want is a rule for vocal stress. Yep. Uh, so a lot of actors that have to do long recording sessions where they scream and yell for uh, different kind of voice Dragon effects. Dragon Ball Z video games. Yeah, obviously. Uh, the prime <laughs> example. Uh, if, if they were going to do that, mm -hmm. then they get to um, get additional stunt pay for working and recording vocally stressful material. Right. Um, now this may seem, I think at first glance, a little sillier, um, but then you think, when you think about it, like, these people's entire livelihood is based off of their voice. So if they can't use their voice... Like, if they throw it out from doing vocally stressful sessions... They're out of work. They're out of, yeah, they're out of work. Weeks. Like a construction worker breaking their arm. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much the same idea. So I think that's totally reasonable. Yeah. Um, um also I mentioned before the podcast... The voice actor of Invader Zim, and how he was a perfect example, because I saw interviews with him back when that show was on, saying how much doing Zim's voice strained his voice, and how there were numerous times where after like recording a season of Zim, he couldn't talk for like a month, because it strained his vocal cords so much. If so this is a real thing! And I've watched like, Invader Zim, so that bit of information does not come as a surprise no. to me. I mean, when you think about how many takes these people have to do sometimes of a take that's just them screaming, mm -hmm. you, like, that's a lot of strain on your voice. I dare anybody listening to just sit in their room and scream for ten minutes straight and see how your voice feels afterwards. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> uh, so the third thing, uh, and going along with this uh, the stunt sort of pay thing is uh, stunt coordination during motion capture. Now, as we know, as uh, games get more and more intense. It's um, become motion. a really big thing. Yeah, motion capture's become a huge thing, and I guess they're having these vocal artists do a lot of the motion capture now, which I guess they didn't do as much in the past. Yeah, to get because they want the characters' faces to match. Yeah. Kind of. Um, Until Dawn, a great example that just recently mm -hmm. came out, where all the main characters, all the characters, actually, including Peter Stormare. Peter Stormare. Oh, so, so good. good. So good in that game. Um, we're all facial captured and motion captured for their parts in the game. Um, and in that game, it's spectacular. It really lends a, an amazing element of realism to the game. And I would hope that all of them are being were compensated for their physical work for the game as yeah. well. However, yeah. many of them are actually like television and film actors. Yeah. And I don't think it was so much that there was a problem that they weren't being compensated for that physical work, but it was more that 
when they were doing a lot of that physical work, especially in that games that are more physically too. demanding, yeah, and there were not, like, stunt coordinators. Like, right now, companies are not required to have stunt coordinators there. It's not like when you're on a movie set doing a stunt take, and there's all these people there making sure everything is safe and goes right. Yeah, apparently video games don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the third point that they want is like, hey, if we're going to be doing this motion capture and it's really physically demanding, there needs to be a stunt coordinator there to make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. Again, totally reasonable. Absolutely. Uh, and the last thing is the other thing that's like baffling to me that it did not already exist, but it's the point on transparency. Uh, so... They need increased transparency in the pro- in the project's actors work on, uh, including information like the name of the project they're auditioning for, how many sessions are being booked, whether there's offensive content, and whether it will be vocally stressful. So again, like super reasonable things to ask for that I totally thought were already information that these vo- voice actors yeah. were getting, but apparently they can be kept totally in the dark about things like how often they're going to be coming into work. Yeah. Like, that's crazy to me. That's ridiculous. So, so yeah, they have to, the, under this, the thing that they want, they want to get that. Yeah. Uh, the first person who was a famous voice actor who really spoke out about this, uh, everybody's favorite voice actor. Mr. And s- Mr. Some, hmm? some people's favorite screenwriter as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. David Hayter, also known as Solid Snake and Big Boss in all of the games except for the most recent two. Yep. Um, who just said, please retweet this, get it out there. Um, if you're an actor or a gamer, it's important. Um, uh, and this article actually says, too, like, none of these demands are outlandish. Well, like really. you, you had said with the, the movie industry stuff, like, yeah. this is this is not even all of the stuff that actors in a movie get. No. But, as, but again, to your point with um, Until Dawn... Uh, video game actors and movie actors, that's a line that is blurring, like, oh, daily. Yeah. So the idea with, that the video game actors would get... voice performance in video games now is such a big deal. It, it's a huge deal. Like, when a game does not have voice acting now, it's, like, a surprise. No, it's an indie title, then. It's an indie title. <laughs> or Japanese. Or Japanese. Like Zelda. Zelda doesn't need voice acting, though. Um, but yeah, so some of the other people who have spoken about this are people like Ashley Birch. Travis Willingham. Oh, Travis Willingham's the best. Mr. Phil Lamar. Yeah. Jennifer Hale. Will Wheaton. Uh, Tara Strong. Steve Blum. Quentin Flynn. Lots of, lots of big names. And a couple who I don't really recognize as much, like the guy who voiced Adam Jensen in Deus Ex. Um, and... A woman named Sarah Elmala, who has voiced characters in some indie games, I guess. Um, so it, it's it's a lot of people. A what lot of really good voice ca- voice actors speaking out about this and making very fair points. Um, um, you mentioned, Lex, that like this may maybe this would result in game prices going up a little bit. But in which case you said you wouldn't mind that if you knew that the people working on the games in this capacity were getting compensated as a result. Yeah, so the idea is there's been a lot of... There's actually been a ton of support for this online, specifically on Twitter. Like, lots of other voice actors coming together and lots of video game fans making the point of, like, you know... And even less so, even video game fans, or more specifically than just video game fans, fans of all these people's work. Yeah. You get people who, like, I love David Hayter because I love Metal Gear so much, and he, like is an integral part of Metal Gear to me. I can't imagine those games without him. So to to think that he's not getting necessarily everything he, I think, deserves. The fact that David Hayter hasn't been getting royalties for, for like Metal all Gear? of his Metal Gear games, that's, that's a crime. That's super ridiculous. He deserves those. He does. So many quotes burned into my mind. <laughs> but no, so yeah, a lot of game players have, yeah. have come out on Twitter and said like, hey, you know, I was so like enthralled in these stories and these and like I had all these awesome experiences and I recognize that that is in big part because of these voice actors mm-hmm. so I support them in this mm-hmm. uh and I think that's great there are a couple people online that are still very much yeah. against it because it's the internet yeah. um but a lot of the counterpoints that people have made are things like um if devs or not devs but if publishers have to pay more uh, for these additional things, 
then the price of games might go up. Yeah. And the price of AAA titles, I grant you, are already very expensive. But on the other hand, I'm like, okay, but if you're buying something and you know that the people who are who made it yeah. are not being well compensated, like that would make me feel really crappy about buying it. Yeah. Yeah. If you know like the developer or the voice cast or someone is getting screwed in the process of this game's creation, then yeah, it feels bad. You don't um, want to know that. It's like with Konami, like, you don't want to know that they're treating their employees like crap. Because then you're like, oh... Back to the pachinko mines. Back to the pachinko mines. <laughs> but, uh, but some of the other points that people have made... I mean, a lot of people were making points about, like, unions, where they clearly didn't know how unions worked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those were kind of silly. But uh, I think the other point that people have been making a lot online against this is, hey, game devs like the grunt coders and stuff mm -hmm. are also getting screwed. We should help them before we even consider helping voice actors. But that's a moot point right now because that's not the issue. That's been it's up. not the issue. You're welcome to bring up that issue as well in tandem with this, but you shouldn't make it compete. It's not a competition. Exactly. Like both coders Co and low rung game developers and voice actors should be well compensated. They all should they be. Do. That would be reasonable. No one is disagreeing with you. Like, we're not having a big fight. <laughs> we yeah, don't like, one of, fight. like, some of the best responses I've seen on Twitter to people being like, well, you know, devs need to be compensated too. The, the best response I saw for that was like, well, then the devs should call up the voice actor union and uh, ask about how to unionize. Yeah. <laughs> that would... Uh, uh, There's step one. The, another another argument in relation to that that people have been bringing up is like, oh, but obviously game devs hold all the power. Like, if the... Or not game devs, but um, publishers hold all the power. If the devs tried to unionize, they would just summarily all get fired. And I'm like, well, maybe, but again, that's why you have everybody be in a union and then the publishers can't screw over any of their employees. Yeah. And then the workers are better compensated and everybody's and happy. And do better work and you're happier, yeah. And yeah. And yes, maybe the price of games will go up, but again, like, if it means, if the price of games going up means that the game creators are better compensated, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. It really doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, what game's coming out? What game's came out today? Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer and Tony Ox Pro Skater 5. Oh, Tony Ox Pro Skater 5 came out? It came out today. To a, to a reception of crickets? What a lukewarm launch. I, I mean, if it came out today, I don't know. I haven't been looking to see I if... haven't either. I'm imagining that there's not been much response, though. I mean, let's... Uh, we're going to find out. We're going to talk about it next show, and we're going to we're gonna do yeah. flop or not. You know? uh, Lego Dimensions comes out on Sunday. Um, Persona 4, Dancing All Night, comes out Tuesday. Samurai Warriors 4, 2. <laughs> Final Fantasy 10, 2. Final <laughs> Fantasy 10, 2. Um, and yeah, that looks like that's about it. Alien Isolation Collection on Linux? Linux? Cool. NBA 2K16? Sure. Apparently they got the facial capture software to work on that now. <laughs> oh my, that was horrifying. Yeah, I think someone was saying that it actually works well now. That, that was actually more horrifying than uh, Unity. Unity's horrible faces. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was the breaks. Yeah. That's about all for this week. Got through all of our many, many stories. So, hey. So remember, everybody... Listen to Ron Jeremy. Get outside. Read a book. Stop playing video games so much. Stop listening to this podcast. Do you have any idea how high the Asians SAT test scores are? What are you doing with your life? Just drinking beers and playing video games. Exactly. That's all children like do now. Like an idiot. Like an idiot. All those ten-year-olds drinking their beers and playing their DSs. It's okay, because uh, the con consoles are all going to end soon. <laughs> It's all it's all pointless in, in the end, ultimately. Hashtag nihilism. After this show, I gotta take a look, see if I can dig up a torrent of super horny O brother. This reminds me, uh, another great connection, uh, Pierre Stormare, nihilism. Because he's one of the, isn't he one of the nihilists in The Big Lebowski? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It all connects. It all connects. The number 23. Oh, no. <laughs> 
But anyway, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. I have been Lex. I've been Dan. Uh, you can find us on all sorts of social media, such as YouTube, Facebook, Steam, Twitter, and iTunes. Uh, we yep. have show archives up on iTunes and on the Chipit.net site. We are typically yeah. broadcasting live on Chipit.net on Fridays from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So definitely tune in then or listen to the archive, whichever, and definitely check us out on social media. We'd hugely appreciate it. Yeah. Um, this has been our show. So until next week, remember, don't, don't copy, copy that floppy. floppy. I just saw something. Oh. So it does all connect, because number 23 starred Jim Carrey, who was also in Ace Ventura Pet Detective, um, in which he naked came out of a a, a robotic rhino? rhinoceros's yeah, butt, I remember that. which is a direct metaphor for EA Origin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>